What's going on guys? John Elder here from CodingView.com and in this video, I'm going to show you how to bind drop down boxes and combo boxes with Kinter and Python. Alright guys, like I said, in this video, we're going to look at binding drop down boxes and combo boxes. But before we get started, if you like this video, and want to see more like it, be sure to smash the like button below, subscribe to the channel, give me a thumbs up for the YouTube algorithm. And check out CodeMe.com where I have dozens of courses with hundreds of videos that teach you to code. Use coupon code YouTube1 to get $30 off membership. That's all my courses, videos, and books for one time fee of just $49, which is insanely cheap. Okay, in the last video, we looked at binding uh, things to widgets. So you don't have to necessarily click a button in order to activate a thing. You can do a mouse event, you can do a keyboard event, any sort of event. We looked at that in the last video. If you missed that video, check the playlist in the comments below. In this video, I want to look at drop down boxes and doing the same thing, but with drop down boxes. So you've got a drop down box and you select something from that box and then you want some action to take place based on what you clicked on the box without having to press a button in order to select it. Right. So that's what we're going to look at in this video. And there's a couple of different drop down box things in Kinter we've looked at in past videos. There's the the regular sort of uh, option menu drop down box. And then there's the combo box, which is a little fancier looking. We'll look at both of those in this video. So I've got this code. It's I saved it as dropbind.py. And this is just our basic starter code that we've been using forever. So let's just start out by creating a drop down box, uh, an options menu widget. So we start out by creating a, uh, a Python list, right? And we just want to sort of define the things that we want to appear in the drop down box. So let's just go Monday and Tuesday and Wednesday and Thursday. Almost done. Friday, the best day, and Saturday. Eh, what the heck? Let's put Sunday in too. Why not? We're crazy. Okay, so we've got our options. Right. So uh, I'm going to call this options because that makes more sense to me. OK, so now let's just create a variable so that we can get the state of our drop down menu. And this is just normal option menu widget coding. We've looked at all this in the past. So I'm just going to call it clicked and let's set, set the sequel to a string var capital V. Ah, there we go. And it's a function. And now we can set which one we want to appear when this thing loads so we can go clicked dot set and we want to select options and then which one of these do we want let's start with monday so monday is the zero with item in this list so we put zero here if we wanted this to be tuesday the, that's the first item because you know python lists start at zero so we have zero one oh i'll come back so we have zero one, two, three, four, five, and six. So whichever one you want to show up in the little menu by default, you put that there. So we're setting that. All right, so let's let's define this and let's just call this, uh, I don't know, drop. It's a drop down box or drop down menu. And this is an option menu, if you've forgotten. And we want to put this in root and we want to set it as this thing right here. So clicked. And then we want our options to appear, All right? So now we can go drop dot pack. And let's give this a pad Y of 20 just to smush it down a little bit. Okay, so let's go ahead and save this. So drop bind dot pi, we want to run this. And when we do, we see here's our little box and here's Monday. And if we click on it, our box appears and we can select whichever one we want. Now nothing happens yet because we haven't done anything. Well, in the past, if we wanted to make, you know, make a selection and then do something based on that, we would have a little button next to here that we would then click, right? So we can do that real quick if we want. Let's just go my button just to refresh our memory and it's a button and it's in root. And the text we want to say select from list. And then we want to give this a command of, uh, I don't know, selected. All right, so then up here, we can create a function called selected. And then we just want, say, a label. And that's a label. And it's in root and the text to say uh, what? Let's just say clicked dot get. And then let's just pack this on the screen here. 
Okay, so we can come back down here and let's just my button dot pack this on the screen and good enough. So let's save this and come back here and run it. So we have, let's pick uh, Saturday and if we select it from list, boom, Saturday pops up pops up. We remember how to do this. We've looked at this before. So how do we make this say, for instance, Saturday pop up without having to click this button? That's the whole point of this video. And it's surprisingly easy. In fact, let's just get rid of this my button. I'll just comment it out completely. Now we just come to our option menu widget. And right after options, we can just set a command equals and it can be whatever we want. We would call this selected. So let's just call selected. And now all we have to do is pass this event into our function right here. All right, so there it is. So this should, whatever we click on, it should pack it onto the screen as a label. So let's give this a try real quick. So we pick Friday, boom, Friday pops up. We pick Saturday, boom, Saturday pops up. We're not clicking any buttons. We're just selecting it from the drop down box and boom, there it is. Now. Um, that's all there is to it. Now, if you want to do something with that, well, you can, you know, you could just use clicked.get. So if you wanted to do some logic or something, so we could go, you know, uh, if click.get equals, I don't know, Friday, then my label, let's put the text as what? Yay, it's Friday. All right. Else, we could just put the label as whatever it is. So let's save this and give this a try. So if we click here and we click Friday, yay, it's Friday. Oh, did I forget to? Yeah, we need to comment this out. All right, so let's save this and try it again. Close this and run it again. All right, so Friday, yay, it's Friday. Monday, it just puts out Monday. So whatever you wanna do, whatever actions you wanna take based on what's clicked here, Sunday, let's try Friday again, yay, it's Friday. Uh, you can do that with simple logic just by calling on your clicked.get method, which is just down here when we set this as a string variable and originally set it as zero, the first one on the list. But whenever you click it, that zero changes to whatever you clicked on. So those are drop down boxes, very, very easy. Now we've also in the past looked at combo boxes and those look more like sort of web form drop down boxes. And if you remember to use those, we have to import a little thing here. So we can go from tkinter, import ttk. Oops, there we go. So let's just come down here and make one real quick. And let's call this, uh, I don't know, my combo. and set that equal to a TTK dot combo box. And we want this in root and we want the value to equal, uh, let's call this options. We wanna use the same options here. And then we can go my combo dot current and we'll set that to zero Monday. Now this one is actually a little bit more like the stuff we did yesterday. We have to actually bind to this. So let's just go ahead and do that. Let's go my uh, combo dot bind. And to bind this, remember we have to do a thing and then the action, right? So our thing we want to do is doop, 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 like that. And then it's combo box selected. And the action we want to take, and let's go ahead and uh, run our selected function, which is up here. Or let's go comboed. Let's create a new one. Combo E, comboy. Uh, let's just go combo click. So, okay, that's a new function come up here and create that function. So let's go define combo click. And let's do some spacing here. And again, we can just grab the same thing here. And instead of this text, let's put my combo 
dot get. We can just get it. Okay, and then we've already packed this onto the screen, so that should work. Uh, let's come down here, and we have to actually put this on the screen. So my combo dot pack. And okay, so call combo click. We come up to combo click. Ah, oh, we have to pass in the event, of course. Okay, so that should work. Let's go ahead and save this and run it. And we have now this much nicer combo drop down box. And if we click Wednesday, for instance, boom, Wednesday pops up. And the same exact thing as the last one, we can use logic if we want. So, you know, we can do this whole thing here. So let me just grab this and say, well, actually, let's just copy this whole thing. And bring it down here into our combo click thing. And instead of click.get, of course, now this is my combo.get. Otherwise, down here, it's also my combo.get. Okay, so if we save this and run it, we should have the same sort of logical, weird, the same sort of logic thing. So if we pick Friday, yay, it's Friday. If we pick Tuesday, it just says Tuesday. If we pick Sunday, it just says Sunday. If we pick Friday again, yay, it's Friday again. So pretty simple and uh, pretty easy. And you absolutely do not need buttons in order to fire these combo boxes. And uh, so that's cool. So that's all for this video. If you liked it, be sure to smash the like button below, subscribe to the channel, give me a thumbs up, two thumbs up for the YouTube algorithm, and check out codemy.com where you can use coupon code YouTube1 to get $30 off membership. So you pay just $49 to access all my courses, over 40 courses, hundreds of videos, and the PDF versions of all my best-selling coding books. Join over 85,000 students learning to code just like you. My name is John Elder from codemy.com, and we'll see you in the next video.